Hey, my name is Peter. My name is Peter, I'm a recovered alcoholic and uh, grateful to be alive and sober and part of a sacred place called Alcoholics Anonymous. And uh, great to see some friends out here as well. Um, for the love of the big book, I think that's what the title was. And I'm getting um, pulled in a direction I need to listen to. I will tell you first, uh, June 23rd, 1988 is when a loving God separated me from alcohol. And I'm very grateful for that gift. And I'm very grateful for the teachers that were put in my path. And for the most part, all my sponsors were very, very, what I would call rigid disciplined, structured, which I needed at the beginning. I had uh, time with a gentleman named Don P who was not so rigid and time with Gary B who was not so rigid, albeit they were into inventory, but they used, they, they did what my current sponsor does. Uh, my current sponsor is Bob B uh, out of Minnesota. And they would hear my inventory and have a conversation with me. And they weren't barking at me because my third column was wrong or my fourth column was wrong. They would correct it, but they were looking to help me have an experience with the information. And, and what I've learned over the years is I can seek information, but I need to have a transformation. It's really important for me to understand that although God allows me from time to time to speak with authority, I am not the authority. He is. And I don't worship the big book. I love our big book. I love the disciplines. I love all of it. I was brought up on it. But they're all, they're all vehicles to take me to the power that it was keeping me sober all along. I can't, you know, I, I'm, I, sweet Jesus. Um, I cannot take credit for anything. I don't have insight. I don't have discipline. I don't have willingness. I don't have anything. Of myself, I am nothing, the Father doeth the works. But what has happened to me on June 23rd, 1988, I was brought to the bitter end, to the bottom. And I began to say, as this author says, fall up. I was surrendered. I didn't even have the ability to surrender on June 23rd, 1988. I was out. I was empty. There was nothing in me. And what this loving God did for me was keep me away from me, because if I was involved in my life, I would have said things like, I need to go to treatment, I need to get to AA, I need to get a sponsor, I need to do the steps. And that was removed from me, because what I've learned now, if I would have been thinking that, I was back in charge of my life, it's called self-reliance and playing God again. God removed all of that from me. I was brought to a place of Please take me from this God. I don't want to die. And I was a, I was a, a clean eraser board. What I've come to find out is when I first got sober, this big book, this, this, this divinely inspired big book with all the promises, all the considerations, all the warnings, all the instructions validated all my experiences. And where I currently am is my experiences, thank you, God and AA, validate what's in that big book. And I have to give all credit to God. And I, I, the last thing I want to do is, you know, come across as some authority on the big book because I knew nothing when I got here. It was spoon fed to me and it took me on a path to get me some traction to have an experience with God and all credit goes to him. What I do and don't do, you know, I'll, we may not be everything God is, but is it possible who we are is of God? So even the folks who, who don't open up the big book but attend meetings, they're no less than me or better than me, and vice versa. They're taking their path. And one of the things this big book has allowed me to do in taking me to a place called G-O-D is have love and tolerance around others, whether they're on this path or not. Don P, Don P preached to me over and over and over because I went through that evangelical phase 
you know, fire and brimstone, do this or you're going to go to hell. Uh, that I mean, I, a lot of us have gone through that. And Don pre preached to me over and over and over again, attraction, not promotion. If I'm separating myself from other people, they'll never, come, they'll never knock on your door and say, can you help me? I need to keep the door open and never shoot the wounded. This whole thing for me is a pep rally for the power of God. I think if God was here, he would take the sinners and the saints and, and turn the saints, uh, the sinners into saints, and maybe the saints have compassion for the sinners. I mean, that's what this whole thing is about, isn't it? A spiritual walk. And whether it's fellowship of the spirit, a Woodstock, a, a, a local meeting down the road, uh, I, I like, and I say this lovingly, we're a room full of broken toys. The vagabonds no one really wanted. And somehow, thank you, God, who brings us to AA and AA brings us to God and we get to meet and we get to experience the joy of this fellowship and the spirit and the fellowship. We get to experience the fellowship and the spirit. What we do really get to experience is God. Now, my first sponsor was a guy, Tony N. from Brooklyn. This guy, to me, invented Alcoholics Anonymous when I showed up. I mean, this guy was on fire, as we like to say in AA. He was in the book, and he was a type of sponsor that gave me a time to call, and I had a 15-minute window uh, to... 9 o'clock, he gave me to 9.15. Call 9.16, I got his answering machine. Uh, for newcomers out there, we had things called answering machines back in the day. But... Um, and it was really strict and it was really disciplined. But as an alcoholic, I'm undisciplined. And so he taught me some discipline and I needed that. Then. And I would call him with my nightlies. I would call him with my inventories, if you will. I would call him and he helped me stay current. But as disciplined and as rigid as he was, he always told me he's not the power. He was a vessel to take me to the power. I remember my first AA anniversary, my, my younger brother showed up and he went to Tony. And he says, thank you for saving my brother's life. And he says, I did nothing. He came to me. He put his hand in mine. I put his hand in God's. God gets all the credit. And I remember hearing that. It was one of those things that get deposited. And you don't know why, but it's going to stay with you for a long time. It leaves residue, good residue. And I was with that gentleman for a long time. And uh, we talked about Mark and Mark showed up and I, I went to Mark and he was the first guy to show me how to go through the steps annually. And we start even more rigid, more structured and the disciplines at 10 and 11. But through him, I met a gentleman named Don P. And I never realized how valuable those conversations were with Don P until he was gone. Life seems to be that way. You have gold in your hand and when it's gone, you miss it. In the meantime, I'm taking it for granted. And I never took Don P for granted, but there was just something about his voice and his spirit that I paid attention to. And when I found out he was gone, I realized I just lost something that was incredibly valuable to me, a friendship and gold. But so between him and, and Mark, I learned some incredible things. And one of the things I learned from Don was having some flexibility and latitude, not watering down. It's a big difference. And when Mark passed away, uh, Gary B took over for a while. And there was a gentleman from Staten Island who moved to Cincinnati, Joe Kay, who passed on. And I worked with this gentleman out of Colorado for a number of years who was incredibly strict and disciplined. This is all I was used to. And there was a point on his journey, I thought it was the only way to have someone discipline me. And then I woke up one day, they're just, they're just vehicles, they're just passing on a message. Isn't it God who's doing all this? For example, when I'm writing inventory, I'm writing a fourth step. I mean, who's really doing the writing and keeping me sober through that whole process? My first fourth step, I mean, I look back on it now, who is keeping me sober while I was writing that? Who keeps me sober now when I'm terrified of life and I'm afraid I'm not going to be okay? Who keeps me sober? That's the power that all of this, our fellowship, our sacred fellowship, the program in the big book and the service we get asked to do, those are the things that keep me close to God, if you will, or awaken to God. I mean, there really, really is no proximity. I can't get close to God. What I do is awaken to God.
I awaken to this power that he's closer than my own breath. God doesn't love me if I change. God has loved me all the time, so I change. It's just an aha moment. Oh my God, he's closer than my own breath. I got that in Alcoholics Anonymous, this fellowship, which was a Band-Aid on an open wound. When I got here, I knew nothing. I remember I was in treatment and I went from Long Island, New York to uh, to uh, Minnesota. And um, they would take us to these outside meetings and we walked into a clubhouse one night and there were pictures I now know Bill and Bob. I had no who, clue who these guys were, why they were so important. Who were these two guys? I remember asking someone. They said, that's Bill and Bob, the co-founders. I said, okay, I got it. And I thought Bill was Bob and Bob was Bill. I mean, this is how upside down I was. And I treated pretty cavalier, like, so they're the co-founders, big deal. Anyone could put a, pro, a, a company together. I mean, this is where I'm at at the time. And the only thing I knew was somehow I got to get through a day without picking up and get myself to a meeting. That's all I know. I only know what I know. But people in Alcoholics Anonymous says inside this fellowship is something called a program. And that is what's going to save you because that, not the program itself, but the program is going to be a vehicle to take me to experience this power, which has given me a breath and give me sobriety. My life, you know, I had to quit playing God. It didn't work. I asked God to keep me out of his chair. My life currently is about um, hopefully being teachable and serving God. And he's put me in Alcoholics Anonymous. And I, I, I put people on pedestals. I have heroes in AA. I'm not ashamed to say that. I have heroes in Alcoholics Anonymous and I have heroes outside of Alcoholics Anonymous. Most of the things I listen to for the last few years are very, very, very few AA speakers. Most of the things I listen to are folks outside of Alcoholics Anonymous, spiritual folks. I mean, how much further along, how much more knowledge do I need of mechanics before I start to experience the freedom as a result of the mechanics and talk about the freedom that's involved in doing the mechanics? Or am I still bogged down with, with mechanics day in and day out? I'm still not okay. Mark used to ask us all the time, currently, where are you? I can recite the big book. That's wonderful. Where are you currently? And that was a great lesson I learned. Am I experiencing any kind of freedom currently? Or am I still wrapped up in me and what people think of me and how much knowledge and information I have? Because that's the, God's really not interested in that. God's interested in me serving him and helping another drunk who seeks recovery. Am I prepared? I remember when I first started getting through this book, and the amount of freedom I got was just overwhelming. I was just feeling different, looking at different things, uh, things differently, hearing different. But what I would do is I'd get a new guy and just slam him over the head with the book and the mechanics and you got to do it. And I lose them. And my first sponsor said to me, he told me a story that Bill was running around the streets talking about this white light experience. And they thought he was Looney Tunes. He says, talk to them. Tell them about you. And what I started to do, and it was, you know, double time doing it, is telling these guys, basically anting up, telling them where I've been. So they can say, oh, Pete, so you, you're like me. And I throw some chum out in the water. I say, well, how did you get where you are? And here comes the book. And I pass on, as I do now, this information from the big book. But as I said earlier, my experience is, really confirm what the big book is talking about. I'm no longer theorizing. And where, where I am currently, um, for me, it's really important not only to hear, but to be, you know, it's reciprocal in Alcoholics Anonymous. I'm speaking now, you're listening. Someone speaks and I'll listen. You give, I take, I take, you give, it's like that. But for me, it's really important that along with this information that I pass on some personal experiences while I'm doing it and be transparent and vulnerable. That I don't sit high up on the horse that's higher than yours. That I don't have a throne uh, uh, made for me because I'm in this big book and Mark was my sponsor. I'm a broken vessel. I'm a spoke in a very big wheel. My car leaks oil, if you will. 
I'm broken and flawed. Alcoholics Anonymous is a room full of broken toys. And I don't mean that in a disrespectful way. It's what holds us together. Our brokenness, you know, when we tell a story, we're listening to the, what it was like and we go, yep, me too. Then I want to know what happened to spiritual transformation as the result of these 12 steps in this book. I mean, that's vital. And what it's like now. Where am I currently? And it doesn't mean where I am now is butterflies and rainbows seven days a week. I'm currently a business owner. I've been a business owner for a number of years now. This is new terrain for me. It's a little weird for me because I spent about 10 minutes in college and decided Jack Daniel was better than going to class and I never returned. And there's that inadequacy that I'm not a college grad and I own a business. And there's challenges financially, challenges with time involved. You know, how do I navigate through that? I need to talk about those things, whether it's to a sponsor, a new guy or to you. I will tell you this. What I love about my big book, our big book, is that it always meets me where I am, which is unbelievably remarkable. I have a, you can't see, but I have a, a few hundred books in my room here. And I've, and I've read, I'm no exaggerating, about 90% of them. Now, some of those books were stories about spiritual walks of people. When I read it, if I was to read it, it's not going to meet me where I am because I've read it. But for some reason, when I pick up my big book or I go through the steps again with the sponsor, it meet, meets me where I currently am all the time. So although Bill wrote the book, he really didn't write the book. God did, and I need to understand that. I was sponsored by a guy uh, named Mickey M out of Denver, Colorado, uh, for a number of years, about 10 years-ish, right around there. And um, I learned many, many things from him. But what I really learned was not only more, you know, about the depth of uh, this book and the disciplines in it, what I learned from him, if I could take a couple of things away from that experience, was his vulnerability as to me as a sponsee and the conversations we would have when he would hear an inventory and always reminding me that I'm alcoholic and the talk is cheap, the walk is the sermon. The walk is the sermon. The walk is the sermon. And one thing that came out of these, these wonderful steps and having a good teacher. I'm sharing my fifth step one day with him. And as I'm reading my columns to him, it had to do with institutions. I'm a cradle Catholic. And although I would go to church, I rarely went to mass. And if I did, I would take everyone's inventory, including the priest. And I would think, well, I'm an AA. He really should bring me up to do the homily. I mean, my God. Um, and I would walk away. And I got caught up in a lot of the headlines that a lot of us know about with any religious community. There's, there's holes. There's things that need to be improved. And it can get political. And I wrote all these resentments down about my Catholic church and the cause and what it affected in me and my fourth column. And as I'm reading it, uh, I was told, how long have you been, because I was very matter of fact reading this imagery, how long have you been holding on to this, in, uh, this resentment? And, I, and I, I gave Mickey a lot of pushback. And then he asked me some questions. This is what I'm talking about, considerations going off book, if you will, having some latitude. And what he said to me is, do you go to AA meetings? I said, yeah. He's every AA meeting a good meeting? I said, no. Are there 13 steppers in AA? I says, yeah. Do people get coins and you know they're loaded? I said, yeah. He's, but you keep going back and practice love, talents, patience, forgiveness, and acceptance and bring a solution? I said, yeah. He's, how come you can't do that with your church? And he had me. My life changed. My life changed. See, as I said earlier, to learn how to live them, that takes some action. 
one of the things, another thing I love about our big book and great sponsorship is that it gets me little by slowly, thank you God, away from me and this thinking mind, because I learned the hard way, like most of my lessons, my thought life will create my current reality, and that's never good. My thinking is full of repetitive, useless thinking about before life shows later on, before and later on, and I'm resentful and scared to death at the same time. And it creates a reality. It creates my shape. One of the best lines I love in my big book is actually a couple of them, but one of them is a day somehow commanding. Okay, something about the recording going on. Is that my, Ali, am I out of here? Did you just throw me out of the room? No, no, no. Okay. So everything's good, but my, my Zoom crashed and it just came back on. Sorry about okay. that. Continue, please. Sorry about that. Okay. All right. Um, I was getting drunk somewhere. Where was it? Oh, yeah. Um, what I've learned the hard way is that I write inventory. I write a lot of it. I still do. It's, it's a necessary ingredient. I pray a lot. I meditate a lot. But none of that allows me to be disciplined. God allows me to do that. And all of that work doesn't make me command the spirit to do anything. Any insight I get from writing inventory is God giving it to me. I, I want to be really clear. I can't make myself disciplined. I'm alcoholic. I want an easier, softer way all the time. You put me on the highway. I'm the only guy on the highway. I will cause a traffic jam. That's what I do. Everything comes from God. I can't command the spirit to do anything, but I need what happens is I position myself to be changed by God the way he sees fit. Many of the things I thought I needed to be happy, the very things God has removed from me. Many of the roads I thought I was supposed to be going on because this is what I need to be a good AA. This is what I need to be spiritual. This is what I need to be rich. This is what I need to be a real man is exactly the road that was going to pull me away from God and he removed. And I'm thinking, why is God doing this to me? Why is he being punitive? And yet he was enlightening me because he loves me. Very often, God's way of loving can be what I interpret as denying or even punitive. If any of us have been around little children, perhaps they're playing in the street. I mean, we kids, we still like to run in, in the street. My, my dad would yank me out of the street. and I thought he was being cruel to me. He was trying to keep me out of harm's way. Well, God will do the same with me. Even though I'm 62 and sober a number of years, I'm still a child in his eyes, and I still don't know what's best for me. How do I know? Part of, part of for me is listening to folks when they're praying, they're going, I really hope this prayer works. I really hope this inventory works. I really hope this big book works because I got nothing else. There's humility in action. It's when I write this and I'm going to get me better. I just lost it. My current sponsor is Bob B. St. Paul, Minnesota. I remember uh, talking to Marion, my better half, about this. I, other than my first six months in Alcoholics Anonymous, I've never been without a sponsor. And I had three days. I kind of rose again on the third day, had another sponsor. But I prayed for three days because I just didn't want to be a knee-jerk reaction. And I just, I, I, I really admired this man for a long time, but I didn't want that to be the reason to go to him. I really wanted, as I do, God, please show me a teacher. And there are a few names that got downloaded to me. And I sat with that. And I called a dear friend of mine. And he says, here's where I'm at right now. And he says, give him a call. And I was really, I mean, you know, I'm so with 33 years and I'm just like a 10 year old sometimes. I call up this guy and waiting for saying, never call me again. I'm busy and hang up the phone. And I says, uh, well, would you sponsor me as if I was proposing? Would you sponsor me? And he said, I would love to. That was his reply. And I took a beat, deep sigh of relief. And I call Bob once a week. And he loves to have what he calls a conversation. It's, it's incredibly liberating and freeing. But there's a theme that has run through every one of my sponsors, 
everyone that God is God and I am not. No matter how much information I gather up, that when I walk through the doors of Alcoholics Anonymous, it is the great equalizer. Black, white, rich, poor, antennas coming out of my head, it is the great equalizer. And that newcomer who might have one day, I might need him more than he needs me today because it's reciprocal. Because when I get to sit with that new guy who's inappropriate, who smells funny, who knows nothing, and I get to spend 20 minutes passing this message on, I walk away spirit strengthened. And that's something I need to remember and always hold on to. So I pass this message on, hopefully with some love and gratitude, understanding God's not interested in my knowledge. God's interested in me serving him through Alcoholics Anonymous. And by the way, uh, I'm a good member in my church nowadays, a good upstanding member in my church nowadays. And I treat any, I was doing service there for a long time. And I took the spirit of rotation into that as well. I don't want to be looked at as, you know, the, 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 the bleeding deacon up there, the guy who doesn't want to let go of his commitment. And if they call me for service, I will gladly show up. But I had a commitment there as a, a Eucharistic minister and an elector for about four or five years. And I relished it. Marion did service there. And now we sit in our, in our mass on a Sunday morning together. It was always I was in one place and she's in the other. And I love that as well. I'm unnoticed. I'm not up on the altar. And that's really okay. It's really cool because I'm in God's house. And for me, when I step into a meeting of Alcoholics Anonymous, I'm in God's house. I'm not the authority. No one is. No one is. For me. There's heroes. But God is the power here. And, and that keeps, for me, everyone right size. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing. I am just, I, I tell you something. I am so grateful, again, to all the, the, the men and women that have been put in my life. I see my buddy Ray Shepard out there um, and Marty and a bunch of others. The men and women who are put in my life, um, this fellowship. I mean, we get to talking about the big book, and sometimes we forget where we found out about the big book, and that was a member of this fellowship, and we were brought into the fellowship, and for me, it was like, sit down, you'll be okay, here's a cup of coffee, and they hugged me and shook my hand, and gave me a sense of dignity before they cracked the book open, like I'm human again. Then they cracked the book open and, and beat me, beat the hell out of me. But you get it? This fellowship is a it's it's glorious, it's sacred. We get reborn and resurrected here. In this fellowship, we have a big book. I come into the fellowship, I get a guy like Marty or Ali or one of these guys and say, I'm gonna sponsor you. We're gonna open up the book and we're gonna show you a path to recovery. For me, it's a path to God. And nothing less than that great fact. Now, my job, my and I speak for myself, my job is not to hide God in the closet, make me the star of the book, the star. The star is God. I need to be talking about him from those podiums. I need to be talking about God. Lord, I go to a lot of conferences, and I hear a lot of folks over a weekend, and I can count on one hand how many times credit was given to God. And like one of my sponsors says, you got a problem with God, then go write your little inventory and get right with God. And I'm grateful for the service I get asked to do. Comes of age, says the, something like the basic service is one drunk working with another. And then we have a lot of other service stuff to do. I'm a greeter at my home group, the Just For Now. Just for now. My favorite commitment in the whole world. I love doing it. I look for the youngins walking in. I look for the, the white chippers walking in. You know, you kind of get a read on most of them just walk in. Good morning. There's the coffee. But um, I like standing by the door uh, to quote Sam Shoemaker. It's been my favorite commitment. And I like to put on a sport jacket and a clean shirt and a nice pair of shoes to stand by the door. Because as I was taught by a sponsor who was in this book, that it might be someone's first meeting and it may be an anniversary where family's showing up and I need to suit up and show up for that. I might be the first person they ever meet in AA. So let me put on a sport jacket, a clean shirt. 
a nice pair of pants, even jeans and a nice pair of shoes and say, welcome. It might be that 10,000 times through that door, but I don't know that. So the thing about this book and this fellowship and the service we get asked to do, it brings me to a place of enlightenment. And I get to see the world through the soul rather than through my mind. I get to hear the world through my soul rather than through my mind. I get to speak to the world through the soul rather than through my mind. And my actions come through the soul rather than through the mind. I don't do any of this perfect. But Lord have mercy, it's a long, long way from June of 88. It's a long way from last year. So I need to continue to grow in understanding and effectiveness. And I can't even make that happen. All I can do is chop wood and carry water and plow the field and pray God does the growing as he sees fit, not as I see fit. And I'll just end with this. It's very admirable. I've said it a million times. A lot of people say it. I, I want all of God. I want as much as God as I can. That's, that sounds wonderful. It's a great way to start. But what if, what if God says, this is all you're getting for this path, for this journey? This is it. Am I okay with that? Am I okay with maybe going through this life with not being a wealthy man financially? Am I okay with life and carrying whatever cross God has given me? Whatever enlightenment he's given me where I may look at it as limited and he's looking at it as abundance. Am I okay with that? Or I claim to be spiritual, but I still stop my feet that I want more. God has never really given me crumbs, but if he has, if I'm really in the sunlight of the spirit, I'll be happy with crumbs. It's easy to be grateful for a banquet. Can I be grateful when the cupboard is empty? But because I'm supposed to be in the world of the spirit, I know somehow, somehow intuitively that God's going to bring a meal to me somehow or some way. I just know. And so for this, I'm forever grateful. Uh, I'm grateful to, you know, do a little reflection on some of the men who uh, uh, helped nurse me back to health. I'm, I get excited to talk about this great power I found in Alcoholics Anonymous that has taken me back to church and given me some of the closest friendships in the world. Uh, friendships I can never pick. You know, the friendships I have in AA, I didn't pick. I got a broken picker. I, I mean, I'm not good with that. But God, God put puts these people. I'm spending time with Jimmy and Maribeth from New Jersey this weekend, who are like brothers and sisters to me. And uh, I get to spend some time with them. I was just up in Jersey and we just, we just, there's this thing. I didn't pick them. They were put in my path. This is just God working in the sacred rooms called Alcoholics Anonymous. And that's all I got guys. Peace.